Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for allowing us to proceed in debating on this bill. I know yesterday uh, the House was adjourned. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to say from the onset, I support this bill, the Conflict of Interest Bill 2023. Mr. Speaker, I think it is high time as the fight against corruption must be dealt, must be dealt from the head. A big blow, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and you know, many people, some people imagine that you need to be in a public office to be wealth or to be rich, Mr. Speaker. And the Bible says in Proverbs, I don't know the specific verse, it says the wealth that you have created out of hard work, toil and sweat, your children will inherit. But the ones that you have ill-gotten will be hidden by the moths and rodents and many other funny things, and termites. Thank you, my sister, and termites. And I know Bishop uh, concurs with me with that verse, uh, Proverbs, uh, that says, Mr. Speaker, on the call of interest, I agree with the definition, because uh, public duty, and, and we read under, on principle, Mr. Speaker, can you kindly protect me from the ladies? The two tabidas, I don't know where they are. Senate, sorry, senators, senator ladies, the two female tabidas. senators. The two tabidas, what is the issue with you? The, the two, tabi two tabidas. And coincidentally, they are smiling around the ML. I don't know, is it because Easter is near or what is happening? The speaker <laughs> proceeded by saying that when you look at the leadership and integrity, I will just make four points of the speaker. It talks about conflict of interest. What we are doing is just to enrich because the architecture and design of the constitution is just to give us a structure. As a parliament, we pass legislation now to ensure, Mr. Speaker, that we enrich. And the fight against corruption can only be won if we have the right legislative intervention in place and policies, Mr. Speaker. One of them is the conflict of interest. We don't want people using their offices to enrich themselves uh, and also give influence, Mr. Speaker. Even this conflict of interest outside the public government offices, even other agencies, Mr. Speaker where we have sexually transmitted grades in universities and institutions of higher learnings, where we have sexually transmitted job opportunities, Mr. Speaker, and many others, Mr. Speaker. When you go to some of the universities, Mr. Speaker, our young women, girls, and young women and boys are suffering from a disease called, which are perpetuated within the setup of universities and private institutions or learning institutions through sexually transmitted grades, Mr. Speaker. So speaker, and that's, these are some of the conflict of interest because somebody who is higher up has and do influence against a person within that organization. So, Mr. Speaker, this conflict of interest, people should not know, know that they don't need to be in an office to enrich themselves and fail, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, on the issue of conflict of interest, I know at the amendment stage, I would like proper elaboration, but I know when the jailer committee will table a report, we should also look at their report so that we look at the definition of what is conflict of interest. You should not only look in the public, even somebody who is a chief or mukasa, that was, or a lecturer, or a pastor, so speaker. We, you know there was a pastor who was taking a due advantage. That video went viral, and uh, he's saying they were chasing his spirits in some areas that I cannot mention because this is PG. It is a uh, event, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, on the issue of an explained asset, uh, this is very important. I know there is well declarations that we normally do as public officers, but we want these issues to be taken seriously. So, Speaker, somebody cannot tell us today that he's worth a million, but after staying in an office two to three years down the line, he's, what, he's a dollar billionaire, Mr. Speaker. As a country, we must take these issues seriously. Every wealth, even if you buy a watch, a, a car, a property, what any how much, Mr. Speaker, we must tell us as a public official. Because in this country, we are aware of people who are using their offices to enrich themselves, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we cannot uh, be, be gerrymandering on the issue of serious on the fight against corruption. Mr. So Speaker, ESCC has been given a function. Mr. Speaker, I have little faith in ESCC. You know, I've sat in county public accounts, Senator Ladama has sat in public county accounts. A number of my colleagues have sat in county public accounts. We have made many recommendations, Mr. Speaker. 
for other bodies like ESCC, Mr. Speaker, to do follow-up, to prosecute governors, county officials who continue to pilferage our resources, Mr. Speaker. It is very unfair for, in fact, I am aware that ESCC might be struggling with capacity, with issues of resource allocation, but they have never uh, shown a proof, Mr. Speaker, to, 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 to tell us what they have done. The last report when I was the chair, Jailak, Mr. Speaker, you was truly in the last issue. The only conviction ESCC had achieved when they tabled the report in that, in that year, and it caused a huge uproar in the floor of the House, was convicting somebody who had taken a bribe of 20,000 shillings somewhere in Eldoret. So, Speaker, the fate of any election can be, uh, el not election, sorry. The fight, uh, you know, elections are still very far. The, the fight against corruption, Mr. Speaker, and larceny and graft and plundering of natural resources will only be won if one or two. I remember there was a gentleman who told us at that time that he was not going for small fish or omenas. He was going for big fish. He ended up nothing on the plate, Mr. Speaker. It is very unfortunate. So the fight against corruption with this enriching of this bill that has been pointed by Senate Majority Leader Aaron Cheruyot is, is a bill that should be supported by all and sundry so that we fight corruption in this country. And I want to challenge EACC. Most senators here tell us, and even when we work in the villages, I have seen the motion by Senator Ledama Olakina on pending bills. How can pending bills be there when you go to national treasury? Money has been dispersed. It means it has been stolen. So what is the ACC doing about it? Nothing. When they are reported, they go and call the governors or anybody who has been accused of corruption and see them new my attempt. So speaker, we are even aware on COB control of budget. And I want them to come clean. Where our county makes a requisition, the control of budget tells them what we want to do. They give a schedule. Then they release money to the county after paying certain percentage. And that is why most of the workers, we are having allegations that some of the control of budget staff are now owning houses in Karen, Runda, Kileleshwa, because they are colluding. And even Dubai, they are having private summer homes, Mr. Speaker. If, Mr. Speaker, because they are colluding with county governments to release money that are made under requisition. And the control of budget, not herself, but some of his, her officers are going rogue. And that is how governors are misusing and plundering resources. So what is the ACC doing about it? Nothing. I saw them releasing a report yesterday saying, uh, I think they say Nyamira is leading in bribery, which county is leading, which ministry is leading in bribery, or corruption allegations. But after releasing a report, what next? The ESCC has never told the country what they are doing in the fight against corruption. Yet, under the Constitution, they have an obligation to fight corruption in this country. Mr. Speaker, we have many laws in the Fight Economic Crimes Act, Mr. Speaker. We have many, many laws against the fight against corruption. The chicken must come home to roost when the ESCC will tell us what they are doing. The people who to implement is ESCC and DCI. But what are they doing? There is a weak link in the fight against corruption in this republic. And I hope with this, the conflict of interest bill, Mr. Speaker, it will assist. Then on the powers investigation, I think ESCC has enough powers. This ESCC is a creation of the Constitution. They are supposed to do their job as per the Constitution. They don't need to get anybody's permission to do their job. What, what is the perception that people believe that ESCC must, must get orders or phone calls? It is them who, in fact, they fight against corruption, my colleague members, in counties to be precise, will not be won so long as the biggest stumbling block in the fight against corruption is ESCC. They have never done something. They can contravene what I've said. They can give us statistics on how many corruption they have found. We remember even in CIA, under the former county government, where air tickets were being paid for private individuals. No one has been prosecuted in CIA. We went to Turkana, the same thing, 100 billion cannot be accounted. A number of occasions, Mr. Speaker. So as a country, as we pass this, I have mixed feelings. Because we have enough legislation, but there is nothing to show for what we have achieved as a country in the fight against corruption. Mr. Speaker, I agree with, of course, declaration, standing order 104, conflict of interest, Mr. Speaker, Conflict of uh, avoiding our obligation, Mr. Speaker. The third point is, uh, I wonder, is preferential Senator, treatment. Senator, that is Senator more than Chalier obvious. Thompson. And Senator due influence, Chalier, that is. Sorry, I can see there is an intervention, uh, meaning a point of order from Senator Maratian Ezena. 
What is it, your point of order, Senator? Mr. Mr. Speaker, I think uh, Senator Cherargay should uh, substantiate the claims that TACC receives phone calls. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I, I thought as if they are receiving phone call, as if I'm guided by the answer to you with this contract because I say as if they are receiving. As if is maybe. I didn't say shall. So I think that is what I meant. Mr. Speaker, and I thank my sister, Mr. Speaker, you know she's doing a good job and maybe she wants something in Samburu County in future. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of gifts, and other benefits, I think these are law that was there, uh, of, uh, economic crimes in two or three, you pass. At least you, you have been around these corridors and you know this law. Where you are given, give, even as a speaker, if we welcome you, I don't know at which level, you know, when you come to my home and I give you as a friend, I don't know whether you should declare, because I can give you a cow. That is the highest respect in my community we can do. So I don't know whether you'll donate the cow to the Senate or what happens because you are a public official. Those are some of the issues Jay Lack through Senator Sigay will, will, will give us a headway as we progress, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on complementary treatment, we are aware that some organizations, when they need tenders, they sponsor, I remember the issue of tobacco scandal, and may the soul of the late Jacoyo Mediwa rest in peace. And you remember that committee was taken to, to, by tobacco uh, to Mombasa uh, for treatment so that they could, they could pass a law that was impeding the issue of tobacco companies. And I remember the images where members of parliament were swimming along the beaches of Mombasa. And I know Senator Miraj understands uh, what, what those Mombasa beaches and what happens there. Mr. So Speaker, on the issue of contracts with public entities prohibited, I think under open governance, and I want to ask members when we will be launching a caucus for open governance program, Mr. Speaker, which you sanction OGP, I want to invite members to attend that breakfast meeting on 16 so that they can learn what we mean by what we call beneficial ownership of companies, uh, contributional obligation, and the fight against corruption. Mr. Speaker, you have to note, Senate has taken a lead in having what we call Senate Disc on open governance uh, program. And I know Senator, senators who are here understand what OGP means. We are trying to push for accountability, legislative integrity, legislative openness, and Mr. Speaker, contractual obligation and benefit of an ownership being open through open governance program. And I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, and your office for allowing that caucus to be established. I know these are some of the things we have been pushing in that caucus to ensure that we have what we call obligations, Mr. Speaker. Where most where corruption happens, Mr. Speaker, is during procurement processes. I think that's where corruption starts from. I remember there was a CS, uh, not a CS, an ambassador of America, I don't know his name, I forgot. He said Kenya loses around 700 billion through budgeted corruption. I don't know, we, it was around 2020, I think an ambassador of US, he made it in media. So Speaker, we need to be careful, and I remember when we were looking through budgetary process and many others, so that we look at it, procurement is where issues happen to the Speaker. In conflict of recruitment, I know whenever KDF and other People are recruiting, Mr. Speaker. We hear parents complaining that they are paid 300,000, 200. You have seen even here in, in, um, in Eldoret, RTS training school. Yeah, in Eldoret. You normally see before reporting of the recruits, you see a number of young people being taken to court because they are fake recruitment, KDF recruitment letters. I'm happy it has been captured to protect our people, who, Mr. Speaker. They unknowingly give out 100,000. I know the primary access. Punish the briber and the bribee. Fun, punish the, the, the bribing, the briber and the bribee, Mr. Speaker. I know that's what the primary act is. The one who gives out and the one receives. The bribe, Mr. Speaker, I, the, the English there is a bit a uh, problem, but I know members understand what, what I mean. It is the one who receives and who one takes the law punishes them equally. Mr. Speaker, on the conflict, Mr. Speaker, on the conflict of interest and the recruitment, Mr. Speaker, finally, Mr. Speaker, allow me to say this in support of this conflict of interest bill. Mr. Speaker, government officers should be aware that part of the work we do is to openly, and the courts have ruled, Mr. Speaker, 
any public officer is subject to open criticism and constructive criticism, Mr. Speaker. Mr. So, Speaker, you are aware I'm in court for only representing my people and speaking out and raising serious issues, Mr. Speaker. The law has ruled, and senior counsel like Danson Mahanso will agree with me, and even uh, our, our, our junior learned friends, it's, uh, uh, Senator Rafael Chimera, will agree, Mr. Speaker, that any public official does not have limitation, Mr. Speaker, in terms of criticism. So I find it odd and weird that if Senator Cherarge Sorry, can be sued for speaking about order roads. Order from okay. Senator Chimera. Make it quick. Speaker, I on the standing order one of five, Mr. Speaker. Is the I rise under standing order 105, Mr. Speaker. Is uh, Senator Fonandi, Senator Cherage, uh, factual by stating that I'm his junior in person, Mr. Speaker? He was admitted the other day, I think in 2020, Mr. Speaker. I have practiced law for over six years, Mr. Speaker. So he's actually my junior, Mr. Speaker, and not what he's trying to say, Mr. Speaker. Whatever he's saying is misleading the audience, Mr. Speaker. Can he clarify, Mr. Speaker? I'm actually a senior in practice. And withdraw and apologize, Mr. Speaker. Maybe I request both of you to bring your uh, certificates of admission <laughs> I so that I can make the determination. <laughs> but if you, I, I, if I use my eyes physically, you, you look junior to him, but maybe not academically. Mr. Speaker, I, maybe I'm, I'm, I can't get factual. So on the statement of Act 105, since I don't, I don't know when he was admitted, allow me to, to withdraw that part called junior and call him my learned friend. Mr. Speaker, but you don't need to question uh, Justice and Legal Affairs Chairman Emeritus, Mr. Speaker. Because by the fact that I'm the Chair Emeritus of JLAC, that surpasses anything else, Mr. Speaker. It means I have seen a lot in the practice, Mr. and I'm senior. In fact, under LSK, I should have been given senior counsel by the virtue of being a JLAC Emeritus Chair when this country was undergoing a lot of challenges, including the issue of BBI. And we stood tall, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Mr. Speaker, in support of this conflict of interest, let any public officer know that you cannot sue a member of parliament for representing his people. Personally, my suit in court is because I spoke about the roads in Nandi, Mr. Speaker. And we will not be intimidated and blackmailed by pedestrian civil suits against me, Mr. Speaker. I will always stand to represent. The other day, we were discussing about Meru. The other day we were discussing about all other counties, Mr. Speaker, because our business is to represent. Mr. Speaker, the moment you got members of parliament, then we don't have necessity to, to be elected. Because one of the uh, law of a member of Senate is to do representation oversight, and I'm doing my oversight. I know that suit, Mr. Speaker, is trying to intimidate and cow me not to oversight the work people are doing. But we are going to come back better bigger and with a bang, Mr. Speaker. I want to assure you, take my word, Mr. Speaker. With those very many remarks, I beg to support this bill and see the, the, the frustration, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. You see, and I take you, I want to the bank. 